there's still a big gap in the number of women versus number of men in the construction industry. For a really long time, this was not seen as a career that women could go into. It wasn't until the late 1970s that women were even allowed to become apprentices in the unions. That's a drop off, so outside of that row of columns, um, the patients will come in, they'll drive in. Women still aren't exactly socialized to you know, pick up tools or, you know, while more women are entering, you know, engineering and architecture fields, it's still not at the levels that it should be. There's certain aspects of the job itself that kind of help reinforce that idea that it's not welcoming to women. It's a really inflexible job. You can't bring construction work home with you. One of the other really big deterrents for women tends to be sexual harassment. You know, while it's not necessarily rampant on all construction sites, it still remains a considerable problem. The fact that you have an industry that is primarily men kind of exacerbates that problem. There's also just issues of men assuming that the woman on the site is not the person in charge. There's a question that needs to be answered, they automatically turn to the man, even if it's the woman who is actually in charge. There's also just comments like, oh, you're so small, like how can you possibly do this kind of job, like how adorable, you're competent, that sort of commentary. In construction, the gender pay gap is not as striking as in other industries. Women earn $788 a week, that's 95.7% of men's earnings. Where you start to really see the gap persists though is with minority women. Black women earn 81 cents for every dollar white men make. Um, with Hispanic women, they earn 71.7% of what Hispanic men make and 50.4% of what white men make. We did a tour of a site um, run by Turner Construction and you know, in the elevator there were all these black spray painted spots where there had been some sort of, you know, a lot of times it's male anatomy, other sort of inappropriate drawings on the walls. You know, it's really important for the construction manager to kind of set the tone of like, you see that, you cover it up. And something as small as that can kind of help people feel like they're more welcome on the site. Construction companies have a lot of ability to set the tone for the sites that they work on, how they address complaints of harassment, how they respond to complaints about the condition of the women's bathroom or graffiti that's on an elevator. Things like that can make a really big difference. By responding to harassment or just any sort of bias on a site by saying, well, well, that's, that's construction, that's just how it is, kind of just reinforcing that like boys will be boys attitude. You're not doing anything to help change things. You're not maybe going to change things overnight, but by letting the status quo continue, you're also letting things remain static. Some companies have started programs to help women re-entering the workforce. Basically, it's a recognition that, you know, it's sometimes really tough to come back to work after taking an extended break, be it for raising a family or other reasons. I think programs like that are really important to help women see it as an option to come back to work. In terms of hiring practices, construction companies can recognize that people are tempted to hire people who look like them. One of the companies we interviewed, they actually started a diversity council with that in mind. The idea being that they are more tuned to cultural differences and potentially like unconscious biases. Issues of harassment and discrimination are obviously not just a construction problem. You know, women have to work twice as hard in a lot of different industries. A lot of the, the women I spoke to were very hopeful that because things have changed so dramatically over even just the last 10 years that things will continue to improve. Younger generation of workers are way more used to seeing all different kinds of people on a construction site. A lot of companies are recognizing that diversity is not only obviously a moral imperative, but it's also, it makes a lot of business sense. Discrimination can be very expensive. One of the most important areas for enacting meaningful change is, you know, getting women into more leadership roles. There's a saying, you can't be what you can't see, and I think that really applies 
to, I mean, any industry that's been traditionally male dominated. Until we change the way we build entirely, there's just some things that are not gonna be able to change.